everyone, it's Keely from Soy and Shea and thank you for joining me. I've had a couple of requests as well as suggestions from family and friends that I should be doing a few themed soaps. And one of those themes is a mermaid inspired soap. So today we're going to go and make mermaid splashes and the first thing I'm going to show you is how I'm making the soapy embeds to go on the top of this soap. Okay, so what we are making are these little mermaid tails and I have my silicone on here. My silicone tray here has 16 tails and as my soap needs 17, I have already made one batch and I'm going to take you along as I make another whole tray of mermaid tails because I have some other ideas for these tails as well. Now what I've done here, I have got some pots of mica all from my micro obsession. I have eminence. Blueberry Delight and Tutti Fruity and what I've got here is just a little makeup brush and it's quite a wide sort of tipped one and what I'm going to do is dip it into my pot of mica and I'm just going to start dabbing it all over the tray just to apply some colour into each of these moulds and as I'm putting all three colours I'm trying not to fill a whole mold with just one color. So we'll get the purple in. If you do feel that you've got a little bit too much in them, you can just gently blow on them to move that micro around. But I'm just going to fill in all my little tails here with just a little bit of purple. Then we're going to do the same with the blue and then the same with that tutti fruity colour as well. one of the ways in which you can colour your, um, your melt and pour. As you saw when I did my pineapple soap, I actually poured all the melt and pour into the soap mould first and then I painted the rim of the pineapple. Because these pieces are so much smaller than what that pineapple is, I find that if I try and do it on something try doing it that way on a small piece I end up with mica all over my fingers I end up with it all over the back of the piece as well and sometimes it's just not the sort of look that you're really after doing it this way I know that I only get the mica on the front of my mermaid tails and the back of the tail stays relatively clean so in my jug here I have some of the Stevenson's no sweat opaque or white melt and pour and it's being coloured with some of the chambray mica and all I'm now going to do is pour it straight into this mould. Now you will end up with this smaller mould with a little bit of overfill on the mermaid tails, they do need a little bit of cleaning up but I think the these little ones are just worth that little bit of extra effort so that you don't end up with a mermaid tail that is too big for what I'm trying to achieve. gonna have quite enough melt and pour to fill this mold but that's okay because I already do have 16 of them poured out ready to go into the top of the soap. I'm going to let these ones set up for a little bit then I'll come back and show you how I tidy them up. Okay so let's get to making the main part of the soap. In my bucket here I have my oils and in my smaller bucket here I have my sodium hydroxide and water. Both have cooled down to a temperature of about 26 to 28 degrees. I'm just going to knock the bottom of my stick blender to knock out any air bubbles and I'm going to pour my lye water solution down my stick blender. The main reason I personally do this is to stop the lye water from splashing back up and um, actually getting onto my skin. So I'm just going to gently pour that down the stick blender to avoid any of that splash back. I'm going to mix it up and then I'm going to separate it out for some colours. Mm -hmm. 
So I have got this mixed into a very light emulsion and the first thing I'm going to do is I want to make a bit of a sandy base on the bottom of this soap. So I'm going to pour a little bit of that off first and that might be just a wee bit too much. Just pour it back in there. And what I'm going to do is I am going to use a little bit of Bronze Sparks Mica. Grab a spoon. So I'm just going to put just a little bit because I don't want this to actually be a, a dark brown. I want it to come up as a little bit of a sandy colour. And this is going to be very similar to when I did the Ocean Breeze um, soap. And what I have here is just a little bit of titanium dioxide, which I've dissolved in some water. I'm just going to add just a tiny bit just to make it come out more of a sandy color. I can always add more if I want to. And I'm also going to pop in my fragrance oil now. I've done a blend of a couple of different fragrance oils. I wanted something that was fruity with a little bit of floral and also um, a little bit of an ocean smell. So I mixed a few together. All have got no vanillin and I know all behave really well. So I'm going to mix this up and then I'm going to pop it into the uh, loaf mould. Okay, so I'm thinking that looks a little bit too peachy for me. So I'm going to also add in just a touch of mocha brown just to try and make that come up a little bit browner. Okay, so that is looking really good and I have actually blended that up quite a bit more than what I would normally because I want this to um, set up a little bit quicker so we can get the water part of this poured in. Okay, so I'm just going to give this a bit more of a stir to make sure that I've got all of that um, mica from off the edge of the jug here and then I'm going to grab the mould and pour it in. Okay, so I have the loaf mould here. I am just going to prop it up on its um, corner here because I want my seabed to have a little bit of a diagonal to it. I'm going to pour this brown straight in and this kind of, I don't really want it to be that perfect so I will just make sure that I'll give you a better look in just one moment. Okay so I have that kind of in there. It does look a little bit messy. We'll pop it on an angle so you can see there. I'm just going to get this spoon and I'm going to just move it around a little bit just to give it a little bit more interest as if it's on the bottom of the sea here. And then I'm going to put just a very fine mica line across it as well and then I will start going on to my other colours. Okay, so I have got my Blizzard Mica in the Nurture Spray Pump here and I'm just going to give that a very light dusting. It's not going to be a full Mica line, it's just enough um, to give it a little bit of interest when it, um, when it gets cut. So I'm just going to leave that to set up a little bit more and I'm going to mix up my other colours. got all of those mixed up and I'm going to now do a bit of an in the pot swirl into my big bucket here so I'm just going to start pouring in sort of dividing the bucket up into quarters or at 12 3 6 and 9 and I'm just going to pour the colors straight in like that and we're just going to alternate them around until those buckets are or until these jugs are empty and then we'll give it a quick swirl with the spatula and then pour it into our mold. Okay, so 
So I'll give those jugs a bit of a scrape in a bit. But what I'm going to do, so I don't muddle this up too much, I'm going to come down into my pot. I'm going to give it a quick once stir and then across the middle. And now I'm going to pour it straight into this mold. That bottom bit should have set up enough now that I won't need to worry about it moving. So I'm just going to give this a bit of a knock down to make sure I've got all of the air bubbles out. Then I'm going to scrape all these containers out onto the top of this soap. All right, so I'm going to scrape these out and then I will come back and we will do the top for this mermaid splashes soap. Okay, so for my topping, I have my um, lye solution mix here. I'm just giving it a bit of a stir up as it has some titanium dioxide in there. And then I have my oils and I'm going to follow that same process again of tipping my lye water solution into my oils, mixing it up, and then I'm actually gonna separate it out for some colors to go on the top of the soap here. Okay, so I mix this up a little bit more than what I would normally because I want this to set up fairly quickly. I'm going to spoon this onto the top of the soap here. But what I do want to do is just add a little bit of this um, Blueberry Delight Mica into this smaller tub and mix that in just so we get a little bit of colour on the top of the soap as well as just a plain white. Okay, so I'm hoping that my idea is going to work. I'm just going to pour this blue into the white, then I'm going to let it set up a little bit more, and then I'm going to start spooning it out onto the top of my soap, so it will hopefully look like waves crashing down. Okay, so I'm just going to let that sit there for a little bit now until that thickens up, and then we'll come back and finish the top of this soap. While the soap sets up a little bit, I'll just show you a couple of these tails. So if we just pop them straight out of the mold here, you can see when you pop them out, it picks up all of that mica on the top. But as I said, you do get some of these little overhang bits. Some of them will just tear straight off, but otherwise I just get a little sharp knife and I run it around the edge just to cut any of those bits off there, just to tidy them up. So I'll get that one done there. And all these little scraps, if I've got my little pot of soap, if I've still got some in there, I just put them straight back into the pot and start melting them down for the next pour. So that's the little tail. And then what I did to finish them all off with, we'll just grab this here. I have my Blizzard Mica and I just give it a quick little spray and that pulls up all the little scales that are on the top of there. So I'll get these ones um, unmolded and then we'll start finishing the top of this soap off. Okay, so my soap in the pot here is thickening up nicely. I have a stainless steel spoon here, but you have to make sure it is stainless steel, otherwise the raw soap will interact with aluminium. And I'm not, I've not actually had it done to me, but I hear that it's not meant to be very pleasant when it, um, when the two react to each other, and it can also eat away into your aluminium as well. So all I'm going to do is pile this on the top here and then we're going to see if we can make it eventually look a bit like a wave. Making sure I'm coming up into all the edges, all the corners. I am going to have some left by the looks of things. So what I'm going to do is pop this last little bit into a piping bag. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to try and attempt here is to get some waves on the top of here. So I'm going to just work along and I'm going to push my soap up and into the middle. And then I'll come in from the other side and try and curl it over so that, in fact, that's actually starting to do it by itself, I think. So, in fact, I think this is set up enough that it it is going to form a wave. I'm just kind of pushing up and flicking it over. Oop. So 
I'm just going to push this side back over a bit as well and then I'll try and push that wave back over and in. It's almost a little bit too thick to do what I want it to do but I might also see if I can get the effect with a slightly smaller spoon. If I grab the plastic one. We can kind of manipulate it to do whatever I want it to do, I suppose. <laughs> okay, I think I'm pretty much out of my play time with the, the top here because I do want to get these other bits in so I'm going to it is kind of flipping over I think this is going to be something I can practice but I also have a feeling I will be making more of these loaves so I'll be able to perfect getting a wave onto the top I'm just gonna kind of push it back over all right so I have that one there First thing I'm going to do is give it a really good spritz with some Blizzard Mica because I want it to be nice and shimmery on the top here. So I've got the Blizzard Mica which will add a really nice sheen. And I have got just a little bit of glitter as well. This is Snow Queen which has some little blue flecks in it. So I'm just going to spray a bit of that down there. I also have... Where have we got them? Here they are. <laughs> I also have some sprinkles which I got in this week. If you follow along with me on Instagram, you'll know that we had a few issues with the sprinkles. But these ones are perfect for this project. If I can get them open. Okay, so I've got them open. All I'm going to do now, I think I'm going to put my mermaid tails on the sort of ridge of the um, of the wave here. So I'm just going to flip this around a little bit and I'm going to sprinkle just some of these little sprinkles down the edge here. Oops, just a few. That's right, we'll grab some of them from off the top always have these skewers up in the pot there they are good for all sorts of things so they're good for getting things off your soap that are got that finer detail I use them when I am cleaning out my soap stamp I can get them in between the letters to clear out any bits of soap that's stuck in there oh they're so good for everything and I do actually if they've not um, got too dirty I do wash them off and stick them back in the pot to reuse them Alright, so I think that is enough sprinkle on here and now it's time to get our mermaid tails in. So I'll finish cleaning them all up while that soap was setting and I'm just going to pop a little tail on each of these bars. So I'm just going to go straight in there and I'm going to just pop it in at a little bit of angle. I'm just trying to think about how my multi-bar cutter will be cutting these as well. So, but I think that should be fine. So I do have my soap molds actually marked out. That's what all these little lines are. And where each of the lines are, that should actually correspond to where one of the soap wires or one of the wires go through on the cutter. So as long as I'm between those lines we should be fine for lining it up so I will get all of these in here and then I will bring you down for a closer look of mermaid splash So here is Mermaid Splashes. It is smelling great and I'm really pleased with how it is looking. All that shimmery goodness from the glitter and micas and those mermaid tails are looking really good as well. I will leave it sit here for about 18 to 24 hours and then we'll come back and cut it. And just over to the side here I also have just those little extra bits. I've piped them into a couple of little moulds and these will get sent out for goodies or given to kids at markets. 
So we are back to Cut Mermaid Splashes. It is smelling great and it is so sparkly and shiny. I have noticed we've got a few little crack lines along the waves there, which to me suggests this has got very hot while it was setting. So I am expecting to see some glycerin rivers through this one, but being an ocean themed soap, that should be okay. I am popping this on its side and I do know that all of those mermaid towels are clear of the edge of my cutter so they shouldn't get pushed out on this one like they did on my pineapple soap. So we are now all lined up. That is going to go through nicely and hopefully none of those sprinkles will drag through. They'll just fall off if they're not going to cut. Right, so we're through the sprinkles and I'm just going to push down through the soap and catch my end. I can see I've got all gold shimmer on the side of this from that mica line that I've done. We are now through and we'll grab this piece from off the end and here is mermaid splashes so the idea this is meant to represent the sand on the bottom or a bit of a sandbank and usually when you get the sandbanks um, the waves crash up and over onto the top of them I'm really quite pleased with how the colors have come up on that and I can see the glycerin rivers but it's not too obvious on there and that wave on the top of that soap is really really good so even though I was struggling to get them I'm really pleased with how that one has come up now I have been editing the video while this was curing and for some reason every time I picked up my little spritzer of mica I kept saying I had blizzard mica and in fact I actually had extravagant mica instead whenever you saw the gold. Blizzard mica as you can probably guess is my absolute favourite mica and that's why I always say it. So that is another piece there. And again, we've got that really nice wave shape on there. So I'm really quite pleased that they did turn out. I hope you have enjoyed watching me make my Mermaid Splashes soap. If you did, why not leave me a thumbs up, any comments down below. And if you do have any questions, I will get back to you oh, as soon as I can. Um, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, hit the little bell sign and it will tell you the next time I upload a video. And next week's video is going to be another themed and requested soap. So thank you very much for watching and until next time, have a great week.